Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm excited to bring to you my latest upgrade for the Heavy Chevy. We're going to be swapping out this refrigerator. You know you are getting old when a refrigerator excites you. <laughs> now seriously, uh, in the RV world, if you're not familiar, there's really not that many options. What they use is what's called an absorption refrigerator and it uses a propane flame to heat like an ammonia and water gas I believe that's what it is and somehow heating this gas up creates some type of reaction that makes the refrigerator cold some people run re residential refrigerators but if you're on the road a lot like what we plan on doing is kinda traveling place to place it's not really the best it's, there, it's fine if you're plugged in but uh, having 110 available to you at all times is kind of hard even with solar panel and an inverter I could run a refrigerator, but you know, this is only a 30 amp coach too And I don't want to have all my 110 eaten up by a residential refrigerator So that's kind of been your options even though this fridge uh, it will run on 110 if you don't want to run on the propane it does have a 110 heater to heat up the gas, but uh, the problem with the absorption refrigerators are they're not very good especially the hotter weather you get into the less efficient it is in the past couple of camping trips we've been in we've really struggled to keep this thing below 45 I put some fans in there we've got it down to about 40 on the last trip so I've done a lot of research and it's looking like we're probably gonna be going full-time here hoping in the beginning of 2022 uh, it's time to just go ahead. I found a really good deal. I got a scratch and dent deal on a fridge. It was supposed to be delivered today. It's held up. It's in Atlanta right now, so it should make its way here. But I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of a very rare, cool, somewhat breezy day here in Florida and go ahead and get this old fridge out, get the wiring prepped for the new fridge. So basically, it's just like your residential refrigerator, but it runs on 12 volts. So instead of using gas and all that, it uses a traditional uh, compressor. It uses Freon gas and it works just like your home refrigerator, except it uses a very efficient low draw. I believe they said it's like five amps per hour uh, DC 12 volt motor that's gonna power this thing. And the best thing is the research I've done in that these things are supposed to cool down about three to four hours be down to freezing or you know 34 degrees whatever you want to keep your refrigerator at in your f freezer the nice thing is it's two different temperatures because it works like your home refrigerator you can keep your freezer colder than your refrigerator you have the two settings you know? this is fairly new stuff in the RV world I mean it's not brand new it's been around for a while but it's not mainstream yet uh, some manufacturers are just starting to implement this into vehicles so this is fairly new technology so it's kind of risky jumping into this but then again the way I look at it a lot of the stuff on these RVs <laughs> it's just not that great it's not built for full time and, and using it a lot it looks pretty gets you off the lot they it works to a point you know like the refrigerator they work people have been using them for years like I said here in the south when it starts getting really really hot uh, it becomes pro a, a problem especially if uh, some people the refrigerators are built into the slide outs and then the heat has to duct out through like an s vent or something like that or comes out through the side those people really have a lot of problems and they, they usually spend time and effort and money on fans to try to move the air because the air will come in here to, tr to try to keep this thing cool and then there's a vent on the roof so it tries to keep that going to keep it as cool as possible so the 12 volt you actually don't need any uh, vent ventilation whatsoever so we're gonna start out today uh, taking out this refrigerator so one of the things I have to do is I have to cap off that propane line so I feel like I need to make this disclaimer I used to work for a propane company I've dealt with propane before I used to revalve recertify tanks uh, for forklifts for home use you know the big you know your white 30 pound tank your 20 pound tanks you used to do a lot of that we also did installations and stuff like that I mostly drove but I did do installations but one of my main tasks was after driving because I mostly did forklift equipment was revalving of tanks so I have a lot of experience working with propane so if you don't take it somewhere uh, just err on the side of caution like I said I have a lot of experience with propane so I feel very comfortable 
capping off the line. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to shut off the tank. So right here we're going to go ahead and close this off. Also, I have a link in my Amazon store too for this item right here. This is a safety device. If any of the gas lines were to ever rupture, something were to happen and there was a massive leak in the system, this thing will close off and uh, keep you safe. It'll shut down all the propane. So it's uh, by Gas Stop. I highly recommend if you have any kind of propane in your vehicle, which you probably do if you have an RV, get one of these. To do this job properly, you need what's called a flare nut. It's flared. This will actually seal that line up. There's no need for the Teflon tape or any kind of sealant. That's the job of the flare nut is to actually seal this up. This is a 3 8 I'm hoping it's 3 8 That's the most common size. So uh, we have the gas line right here. So we're going to disconnect it from the fridge. We're also going to unplug it even though there's no 110 right now. So there's no worry about that. Right. Also going to go ahead and unplug. You have a power and a ground here. And go to the circuit board. We're going to leave the wires in here. You never know. Somewhere down the line, maybe another owner of the vehicle, or maybe me might want to go back to this. I don't know why, but it's good to have the option. So we're not going to destroy anything. Like I mentioned before, the flare nut. See the, the factory fitting here is flared. There's no tape. And that's the way from the factory because that's the flare does the sealing. And here's a little closer look. So all refrigerators here, here's your circuitry is going to be plugged in. This will be left behind. So make sure you, you unplug your 110 and this. That'll allow the fridge to come undone once you disconnect that propane. This is really simple to make. This is just some dish soap and uh, some mortar. And what I did is I turned the propane on before I went inside to uh, make this mix. They actually sell leak detector stuff, but I can tell you, you could do it just as easy with this. Looks good to me. And uh, we'll, we'll test this again later just to be on the safe side just making sure no air has worked its way up you know so before we call this job done we'll go back and double check this one more time let's go ahead and uh put our 110 cord somewhere safe got our propane and our 12 volt lines out of the way so now we'll go inside and work on that but before we do i just want to go over and i should have done this in the beginning but what you're going to need for the fridge. So what I got here is some 10 gauge wire. I've already went online and looked at the instructions on how to do this. So they said 10 to 12 gauge, 10 is bigger. It's going to depend on how long of a run of wire that you're going to need. Mine shouldn't be long. I'm going to tap into a 12 volt right here from the steps to here. Uh, then of course we're going to be safe we're going to fuse it i got some 10 gauge wire fuses and i got one extra it's good to have an extra so we're going to fuse this right off the battery connection and then we're going to run the wire up here and then we'll just need two wires one power one ground and then that's pretty much it then you know you're going to need your flare nut to cap off your propane if you're qualified and that's it. It's really kind of simple. It's not like a whole lot to it. And uh, a fuse. Good idea to always fuse a connection. The refrigerator already comes with like a 15 amp fuse on it. So that's good. But what we're trying to do is if a wire ever rubs through and shorts on a chassis somewhere, the fuse will blow before it actually gets to short out the battery. So let's go inside and take care of a few pieces. And this fridge is going to come right out. So we have three bolts that need to come out and then this will allow the fridge to come out. There's a piece of metal here that's standard. This is part of the RV. Try to protect it from weather because this is vented. You can see the silicone here. Probably trying to protect the wood that's underneath. So might have to fill that in a little bit right there when we're done with this job. Oh, we'll also have to 
seal this whole thing. But see, look, here's the fan I put in, one of them, to try to keep all this cool. So we have to get this trim off. There's just a couple of these little caps right here that need to, they just pop out fairly easily. So that's it, you have your two caps that came off here. Now what you wanna do, every manufacturer is gonna be different. You wanna check the sides here. Make sure there's no screws going in sideways. And we have whoa, two screws down here in the bottom. And that's it, it should come out. Had a little bit of that sealant uh, stuff there. You also uh, might want to get some type of carpet or rug to put on your floor so you don't damage it when you drop this thing. Or try not to drop it. They're not light. undo this little shock that keeps the door from opening up that's also something you might want to look at too before you order a fridge is measure your fridge you measure your door opening I should have just enough room to get the fridge out now some people you might have to take that whole trim around the door off I'm really hoping the new refrigerator doesn't. It's supposed to be the same dimensions. I kind of rubbed these fins a little bit, but we got it out because you have to take the trim off, then you have to break the seal of the whole door. That's kind of a mess. So, I'll show you this. So, down here you have your propane flame. This is the chimney part. Uh, this is where the hot gas comes out right here. And it's supposed to vent up. Now, the gas is supposed to come through here exchange do whatever it does then I guess it goes into here there's a plate between the freezer and the refrigerator I guess there's something back here that gets cold. I don't know it's just kind of a whole weird system because there's nothing inside the refrigerator oh there's the fins that are somewhere yeah I guess this would be where the fins are so the coolant goes through those fins, makes it cold, and that's just supposed to magically make the fridge cold. And I mean, it does work to an extent. It's not as good as like the 12 volt that I'm getting that has fans, just like your residential refrigerator that pushes air and makes it move. I tell you, even this thing on the best day when it's nice and cold, as soon as you open that door, even if you're in and out real quick, you're going to lose 5 degrees like that. Most likely 10. So... You know, you got your coils up here, you got your coils down here, and then it makes its way back through. So, not, like I said, it, it's worked, it works, it's just not the best, the most efficient. And let me show you another big downside to this. So the size of the box that built into the RV has to accommodate these fins and all this plumbing. So if you look, the refrigerator ends here, and you have all this. This is six cubic feet. The 12 volt refrigerator I'm getting that has the same dimensions as this is eight cubic feet. I'm gaining 25% more refrigerator space. So if you look at here, I have like two hands that can touch the front and go to the back. The new refrigerator is gonna come all the way out to here so it's gonna be much deeper. There's only gonna be just like your residential fridge if you look on the back there's a bunch of coils that just run down the back and then tucked in here in the bottom will be the compressor so you know that's one of the biggest benefits too the very same footprint as what this came out of we will have more space so let's go ahead and the only thing we got left is run some power First thing we need to do is we have to uh, had to break up some of this expanding spray foam and give us an access point to go down below the wire. And we 
we come inside here this is where the wires come through the floor so we had to break up some of this here so that way we can route it down over here to where the power is so it's going to kind of zigzag it's going to go here and then come through here which we'll be able to catch the wire back there in the corner all the wires drop down so we'll run it and this is your furnace so try not to run the wires on top of it run it along the side that's safe so now we're just going to zigzag our wires to make my life easy instead of running two wires i loop the two ends together pushed it down and now we got it now we have them pushed down here and now we'll go underneath here we go I know it's hard to see, sorry, but anyway, here's our wires. Now I know ideally you should run two different color wires to this. What I will do, uh, before we plug it in down there, we're gonna cut this. Uh, once I get make sure all the length is right, we'll, we'll cut it before we send power. But uh, what I'll do is I'll up here it'd be kind of obvious but i'll put a red zip tie on there so that way you know it's power and then down here you'll know because it's be the one with the fuse on there i mean trust me like the see these wires here that are black these are positive that's positive that's positive that's positive all these black wires here are positive so the rv makers do kind of whatever they want so you really have to be careful when you're working these things anyhow. So let's run this. I know it might look a little hokey, but I got my ground wire going there. And the reason is because this goes to the battery and that runs through the shunt, which monitors how much power I draw. So I need my ground to run through that shunt. And seeing how this was designed for out gauge, there's plenty of room for four gauge in that. And I ran the refrigerator right off the relay. Now, I know somebody might say, da da da, whatever. But uh, I'm thinking it can handle it. If not, I'll move it over here or on this uh, big circuit breaker. I can always move it, but that should be plenty. Okay, so now we got our voltmeter set up. We got 13 volts, so now we know that this is positive. What I've done is I put some heat shrink on here, some red. I mean, yeah, I'm going to strip back some of it tomorrow when the refrigerator gets here, but it'll still leave some. But at least, even from my own knowledge, I know that that is positive. Now, for you, this will be seamless, but for me, this is as far as I can get today. So we have everything done. We have our ground connected and run up here. We have the power connected down there, run up here. We spray foamed the holes that we dug out up here. We also did it down below. So the only thing left for me to really to do is just go ahead and put that, that grate back on the heater, put the step back in, clean up some of these tools, and I'll see you tomorrow when we go pick up the fridge. Ooh, check it out. Got the fridge. All right, let's go home and uh, get off this trail and get in the RV. Glad I did this work yesterday, because man, it is hot out today. Whew. What do you think? Look at how deep this is. Alright, before I showed you, look. Now I have to make sure this is going to fit through the doorway of the RV. If not, I might have to look at taking these doors and this control panel off. I think I have to do anyhow because these handles are on the wrong side. Hey, look at that! It came with a free spider.
Yeah. Looking good. I'm excited. Okay. So it's going to fit no problem. I actually got 24 inches in the door and bringing it in this way. This fridge is only 23 wide, so I got an extra inch. So we're just going to push it in this way and pull it up. But before I bring it in the RV, we're going to go ahead and switch the doors. Um, if you look, my RV, this side, there's a wall. The way this is set up now, the handles are over here. And I uh, won't be able to get my hand in here to open <laughs> this. So we can switch the doors around. So that's what we're going to do. So this is done, I'll do the ex field expedient method of showing you how this is done in case you buy one of these fridges. Um, so you have two, four, six screws right here that take off this piece. Once that's off, you have three screws right here that undo the hinge that holds on the door. Now understand this is backwards from where it was now, but so. Once that's off, then you just pick up the door and get it out of your way. Then you come over here and you have two screws here. You'll take that out and then you get this door out of the way. And then you can lay the refrigerator on the side. The, uh, I forget what side, but I just leaned it back and you have three screws underneath here and you flip this around. So now once you have that done, you have these two plastic screws. You'll take them out, put the hinge in the right place. You have this bracket here that the door is locked to, so you're gonna switch those sides. Then you go ahead and drop the door back in, put this in, screw your hinge back on, and then you put this door back on, and then screw on your top hinge, and then it's time to reverse the handles. Now the hardest part for me was trying to figure out how this came out. So right here, where the actual handle, the piece that moves, put a screwdriver in here, pry it down, and this piece will pop out, and then you have two screws, and this comes out. So this piece on the freezer will go down here. The refrigerator piece here goes here, and they get flipped, so that's why. Then you have your two dummy things. There's one screw here, one there. Only on one of these, this one here only has one screw. This one here had a plastic bracket with two other screws. Now I'm not sure if somebody already tried to do this and forgot to put that piece in. This was, they did attempt to install this in an RV and this is why I got it cheap because uh, see there's a couple little dings in the door. So that ding there is 250 bucks. That's a $250 ding. Say $500 on this fridge. So now we're ready to put it in. So like I said, it's not hard at all. It's just some simple nuts and bolts now. The one thing is I have my wires running down here for 12 volts. Uh, they put the plug up here for 12 volts. So um, there's a harness here that I had to unplug to loosen this. And now we'll just go ahead and uh, unzip tie it. I can even take this channel off if I need to to bring the wires down. So I'm going to unclip it. And then we'll see where it is. But yeah, we're about ready to put this in. All right. Here we go. Moment of truth. Heard a beep. Let's go in. We have a refrigerator setting here. And you have a separate setting for the freezer. 
and then you have a uh, nighttime mode which slows the unit down makes it quieter in case somebody's sleeping in here and yeah let's take this off let's take this off so one thing i don't think i touched on maybe i did the problem with an absorption fridge is the amount of time it takes to cool off or one of the problems if i were to go camping tomorrow i would already plug this in to have it cooling or i probably would have plugged it in first thing in the morning so we can load it at night of course the dent kind of sucks but i really can't say much so uh, i bought it knowing that let's see let's... okay so i said the fridge would take forever to cool down like I said before, the fridge would take almost like a day to go ahead and cool down. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a stopwatch. And I got a thermometer, same one I used in the other fridge. So right now it's reading 89 degrees in there. So we will see how fast this cools off but I guess I'm pretty happy with the fit you know I got some screw holes here from the other fridge but as far as everything else goes it it fits in here perfect couldn't really ask for a better fit and then listen it's actually running it's all the noise that it makes Oh, awesome. All right. So we'll uh, check that. Oh, I know exactly. People want to. So people are going to want to know how many, how much power this draws. So there, right now we're pulling 2.9 amps. See if I turn this off. Oh, it goes to 1.6. So with the lights on, we're at 2.9. We turn the fridge on. Two point. So about four and a half amps. Yeah, they said it drew five amps, so there you go. Because I know somebody's gonna ask, how much power is it draw? How much power is it draw? There you go. Right now, the entire coach with the lights on and the fridge, we're drawing the whole seven amps. So we will come back later in uh, in about an hour, and we'll see how cold this fridge is. We are at almost two hours. I meant to come out here at an hour and a half. I don't think this thing is going to cool down one hour. I think four hours. Four hours is going to be miraculous because the other fridge at four hours was maybe just starting to show some some change like the freezer would get cold first but uh right after i start the timer i finish the install there's six screws there's two in the freezer and four down here and they go sideways so if you're going to install this make sure you have something that you can screw to so like here i have this wood so we'll make sure i lined it up with this so what do you guys think the temp's going to be look at that 49 that's not bad it was what 88 degrees when we started so 48 40 degrees in two hours drop 48 58 60 40 degree drop in two hours and 48 Hell, the last camping trip, I couldn't get this thing down past 45. Well, I think after we installed the fans, it got down to about 40. Uh, and that was it running all day long, or all night. All night with nobody messing with it. Uh, it just kind of sucks that the original fridge was screwed in right here. Uh, oh, well. What are you going to do? Can make, uh, I couldn't even match that trim. 
put a pair of these thermometers up here. Huh. I'm not sure if I want to keep these thermometers or go with something more wireless. But that would, I just get tired of these cables being everywhere. But as you can already tell, here's a stretch. Well, no, I could go this way. But I don't know. We'll see. 48 degrees. So far, so good. And it's so quiet. Like I said, there's so much room, so much more room to this. We are just about at the four hour mark. And we are at 37.4. Not too bad. About what I heard from people, about four hours to it would be cold enough. I don't think I ever showed anybody inside. Or not plugged in, but check it out, man. Beautiful LED light. Uh, this here folds in case you got. Wow, that is actually really cold. Ooh. And see the difference is you got a fan right there. Now I'm a little. I don't know. Thought there might be a free a light in the freezer, but there's not. Put this in the freezer real quick. Try to get a reading. So far, I couldn't be happier, man. This thing looks absolutely sweet. It fits in this hole perfect. Now, what I had before was a six cubic foot. This is eight, and it fits in the hole perfectly. So that being said, if you're looking going this to go this route, measure 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 make sure that one it's going to fit in the hole the way that you want and two the biggest one is make sure you can get it into the door you can gain some more room in your door opening by taking the uh, framework out i really didn't want to do that but it is an option also too if you do come across this a good option is take the doors off very simple procedure to go ahead and unbolt the hinges take the doors off and you'll probably get a good two, three inches of space with the doors off. So that's another option. Um, but make sure it's going to fit inside your RV. That's the biggest thing. Um, another thing, I believe is Morton's on the Move, had a video on converting your existing propane refrigerator to 12 volt. Um, that's an option if you're looking at that route. Go check them out. But for me, I didn't want to go that route. One of the biggest benefits to doing this is losing all that propane fixtures on the back and gaining the space inside so like i said the same space everything that's here i went from six cubic feet to eight that's a 25 percent increase without cutting or modifying too now i could have went 10 cubic feet i could have taken out some of the storage and cut and modified i really didn't want to do that i do have the room i could have went up but like i said i didn't I don't have the room and I didn't want or I had the room I just didn't want to modify this RV I didn't want to go cutting too much I just want something that would simply fit in the existing hole and this is perfect man I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out so this isn't a review video this is a more of kind of like an installation video and explaining the differences between the gas absorption fridges and 12 volts and why I made the decision so I hope you found this interesting I hope you got some good information if you're looking to go this route yourself I hope you subscribe and join us in our journeys. We're looking to go on the road full time in the beginning of 2021. You know, we're just kind of waiting to see how this pandemic uh, plays out. I'm really kind of hoping to go this year, but you know, things haven't calmed down. There's still a lot of stuff closed down. And I really just don't see going out on the road and getting stuck. Although we're never gonna get stuck. Home base will always be here. That's one thing that we're gonna do different than a lot of people didn't do we'll always have our home base but um because we're going to do international travel as well we're going to travel the u.s in the rv and then we want to do some international travel so i hope hopefully you'll go ahead and join us for these adventures so like shares comments appreciated please subscribe if you haven't links down below to all kinds of discounts and the merchandise and products that i use so take care and uh stay safe we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching